All right, today we're gonna work on this large painting. It's a 48 by 48. I already gessoed it. I just skipped, because I figure you guys don't wanna watch that, but. <laughs> so I'm gonna do architecture abstraction, so wish me luck. All right, so the question of the day is, what painting was Picasso accused of stealing? Let's run through the colors. Copper, Mars Black, Burn Umber, Van Dyke Brown, Phthalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Quinn Red, and I punctured it. It's like the worst ever. Pearly Red Dark, Quinn Orange, Red Oxide, Zinc White, Phthalo Green. Let's get the We just got down with this kind of, you know, dark purple red uh, color. Add a little bit of white in here to kind of contrast this, to kind of contrast this splash with that splash so you don't know if it's white's dominant or the red's dominant. Well, I don't know what color this is anyway, kind of a dark mauve. And so now we're gonna add kind of a coppery red color with white in it. So we'll see, that should play off of this color a lot, but at the same time be pretty complimentary. <music> So we're back again, this layer is dried. Uh, it's kind of the peachy little copper in there. Not much copper, so I'm gonna have to do a more bolder copper because you can barely tell it's any copper. <laughs> so I'm gonna add some white to break this up. So layer, other layers will have kind of a really punchy feel once we add the color on top of the white. So let's go add the white. <laughs> All right, I think for this layer, what I'm gonna introduce is another color. Right now we have kind of this orange, pink, um, 
mauve color, so that does have a touch of blue in it to get this color, obviously, which if you add black and red, there's obviously some blue in the black, right? Um, so what I want to add is a lighter, well, I want a really dark charcoal, kind of blue-black. So we're going to have blue and black. It's going to be contrast to these two colors, especially this color, so we'll see how that looks. All right, for this layer, what we're gonna do is add kind of a uh, burnt or, or burnt, um, I think it's burnt sienna. <laughs> I don't even remember the colors. Burnt sienna with copper, so it's gonna contrast really well with this. And also, this has the copper in it, so it's, this is lighter than that, so we'll see how it plays out. <laughs> So back in, I was gonna work with purple, but I think what I'm gonna do is add some more white in here again. So when you add the purple, it'll have you know, more layers to work with. You want that light layer coming through. This is very dark up here and very dark here. So you need to get kind of lighter colors in there. So the only way to do that is get white back and then cover it again. So we'll see. <laughs>
today we got the white in. Um, so now we're gonna add a little more purple to kind of um, contrast this blue and these reds here. So we wanna kind of pull that together, get more of a consistency across the color board and balance out the painting. It's a lot of orange now, or orange red. You got this to contrast, but you need kind of an in-between uh, color. And so that's what we're gonna add right now. kind of a nice turquoise silvery color. So that'll contrast really nicely with the reds, the purples. Um, it'll complement this turquoise kind of, this blue black color here. So it should pop with a lot of colors. Also contrast with the oranges. So we'll see where it goes. For this stage, what we're gonna do is um, add a little bit of white lines here and there to kind of add a little more tension to this.
So the question of the day is, what painting was Picasso accused of stealing? And this was the famous Mona Lisa. So in 1911, the painting disappeared for over two years and the police investigated all over Paris and they went through several artists. And for some reason they thought Picasso was still it because <laughs> he was obviously a big fan of the Louvre, right? Um, but actually it was a former Louvre employee, uh, museum employee. What he did is he snuck in, people thought he snuck in on the day they, the day before closing and st stole the painting. But he actually went a Monday, the first day after Sunday when it was closed, goes in Monday at 7 a.m., dresses a museum worker in white smock, and so no one suspects who he is, walks in, he's seen him before, right? They thought maybe he got rehired, who knows? So he looks like a regular. Walks in there, uh, no one's looking in the hall where the Mona Lisa is, <laughs> takes it off the hooks, goes into a closet, takes all the framing off, so then it's just down to the stretcher and the painting, and then he's like, oh man, what am I gonna do with this? And so what he did is took his smock off, he wrapped it up, and then he just walked straight out. So the only reason he got caught really, <laughs> this is the funny part of the story, is he went to a dealer, so he smuggled the painting to all the way to Italy. And obviously the Mona Lisa was painted in Italy, but it was, it was either gifted or sold to the King of France at one point. And so it was legally French property, but obviously the artist was originally Italian. So this guy thought he was doing a favor to Italy by returning the property all the way back to Italy. So he went through a gallery and the gallery, you know, authenticated the painting. And that's kind of when he got caught basically. <laughs> Cause they brought the police in and you know, everyone wants the Mona Lisa back, right? So this is kind of, this event is really interesting in the aspect that it actually made the Mona Lisa. So Mona Lisa was known as kind of a really good painting at the time, but before its theft in 1911, people just didn't know what exactly it was. And so this actual case of art theft in 1911, returned in 1913, made the painting famous. And in 1913, before they returned it to France, they shooed the painting all over Italy as kind of a celebration of this guy stealing the painting, right? So in the way he was kind of rewarded for his efforts. <laughs> And that's my question of the day, guys. All right, we just finished the painting. Let's take a closer look. So it has this nice kind of uh, purple. The blue came out really nice. It's kind of this shiny, shimmery blue. Um, it's kind of funny. It's, it reminds me actually of Christmas presents in a way. Um, I added this little touches of white. There was a little bit of white streaks coming through in certain areas, which I didn't really like, but um, it would have been a real pain ass to try to clean this up and make it look like the brush strokes matched. So I just um, added these little white streaks and it kind of picks it up, gives it more of a digital kind of semiconductor look. Um, but this blue is funny because it's very shimmering, similar to <laughs> Christmas present wrapping. So maybe I'll give it a Christmas name, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think it's overall, it's pretty cool. Um, it's very somber, not too, because I don't use the triangles in this, it's just the pure square, it's much more toned down, um, relaxing. I would say it still is a lot of emotion with the brush strokes, which is kind of where I keep the emotion in these type of works. And also the tension between the really light areas, the dark areas, these little tiny lines going, breaking through everything. So it gives it a sense of, you don't know where the layers start and end. So that's the whole point, is it to give some of those earlier layers a chance to kill, still survive. Obviously I have to make you know choices. They're not always the best ones when you cover layer by layer but I do preserve some of the line work and that tends to work as far as giving you a sense of where the shape originally was and um, a sense that they might actually still be somewhat dominant. Obviously I know they're not dominant, but <laughs> since they're the largest, the red, for example, is a very low layer, but um, it's still pretty dominant. Um, it does have a balance in the sense that um, you have this orange on one side and then the green on the other. So it's a little bit dominant in one corner, which is, Okay, um, it does, I could add some more like popping oranges to more balance it out like I normally do, but in this case, I'm just gonna leave it where it has more of a warmer edge on one side versus the other side. Overall, it's uh, pretty well balanced except for the kind of this orange balance that gives it kind of a little bit lopsided in one corner, but you know, it gives it kind of, there's where the sun is, feel. Anyway, I think I overall, overall I like it pretty well. The purple didn't turn out quite as well as I liked. Um, 
you know, I almost feel like going over it on another layer, but you know, at this stage of the game, I would just add a lot more complexity and I have to bring back the brown at some point if I did that probably. So, you know, I just kind of overwent a lot of it with the blue to kind of tone it down and, you know, give a nice contrasting feature. So overall, I think it works pretty well. Hopefully you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe below and I'll see you in the next painting video. Thanks for watching guys. Mm -hmm.